But math ain't one, yes. Welcome to part two of our end of course exam review. Hi, Mr. Adkins. That was that song was of course requested by our own Mr. Adkins. Why don't we give him a round of applause? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So what we're gonna do today, and again, don't be mad. I know I'm kind of hijacking your day, and you're going to have math for lots of periods today, but that's just because I believe that you guys are going to kick so much butt tomorrow on the end of course exam. And here's our last chance to kind of review, show off what we know. And we're only going to do this if we work as a team, turtle power. Everybody? I want to hear it. Turtle power. All right. So our topic that we're going to talk about today is called set notation. All right. Of course, we have our wonderful pictures, and Mr. Atkins requested our theme song today. All right, so we need to go over a few things just if you want to solve these problems. Uh, I need you to remember the symbols. Okay, we have this U symbol. It means the union or the combination of sets. So if you have sets in A, sets in B, and it's the union of those, we combine them together. That's if we're doing the union. Then you have the upside down version of that. Kind of looks like an N is the intersection, which of course intersection ends with N, or what the sets have in common. Okay? So you look at the two sets, whether they have what are they the same in both of them, that would be the intersection. You see this symbol that says the squiggly line or A apostrophe. It's called the complement of A, which is not or what is not in A. And if you're going to try to answer any questions that have to do with what's not in a set, you need to look at the universal set. All right. And then the last thing that we'll look at at the end is called cross products. We haven't talked a lot about those. They're very simple. All you have to do to find the answers to the question is multiply the number of items in each set. Okay, so if you have a set A has, for instance, three elements in the set, and B has four elements in the set, we would just multiply when you mul when so if you have A times B, it's simply just number of items there, number of items there, twelve. Okay, we'll get into some problems next. Now, what might be a good idea is as we're doing problems, take some notes. Mr. Atkins will help you talk through them. You can look at these, uh, look at the problems, write things down. Um, if this is important to you, just raise your hand. Give Mr. Atkins a pause. Rewind. It's a video. That's how it works. Okay? Uh, and again, all of these notes will help you for your end of course exam tomorrow, which I know you guys are going to do great. All right. So here's our first three problems. And I'm going to start off with the easy. Uh, a is given to you. There's A, B, and C. Okay? So first problem, I want you to find the union of A and B, then find the intersection of A and C, then find uh, the intersection of B and C. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now, Mr. Atkins, hit pause. Let these wonderful students try to figure out these problems, and by the time you hit unpause, we'll, I'll, I'll show you the answers. Okay, so you guys ready? Solve the problems. Mr. Atkins, hit pause. So, done making fun of the way I say hit pause? Okay. So let's move on. All right, if we're talking about the union of A and B, remember again, the union of A and B is combining the two sets. The union of A and B will be combining, so we write it in set notation, lowest number is 0, then 1, then 2, and three. Yeah, it's hard to write on these because these are, it's a, it's a iPad. It's not like I'm using a pencil here. Four, five, and six. Okay, so that would be the union of A and B. Some from A, some from B. Combining them all together, of course, without any repeats. All right, so what about the intersection of A and C? What'd you get for that? Well, what you should have is number five. Okay, that's the only thing that A and C have in common. So now looking at 
the intersection of B and C. Hmm. Do you notice that they don't have anything in common? So the way we write that is the empty set. Okay, doesn't necessarily mean there's no solution, just means that they don't have anything in common. Okay, did you guys get those right? Uh, of course you did, because you're awesome. Okay, more problems. These are kind of compound uh, set problems. So uh, when following order of operations, don't forget that we have to do what's in parentheses first. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is just do these two problems. We'll hit pause, then I'll talk about the third problem in just a second. Are you ready? Mr. Atkins, you can help him out. Are you ready? Hit pause. Okay, so what did you guys get? Well, here's how I did this one. First, we look inside the parentheses, and we want the union of B and C, so we're going to combine those. So the union of B and C, and I'm going to do this in two steps, would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9. Okay, that's just this part. Now we want to see what that has in common with A. Okay, so I see in A, and here's going to be our answer. I'll write it right here. In A, I see the number 2. I see the number 3. It's in both of them, both in this and A. And I see the number 4. I see the number 5. And that is it. So this would be our answer. 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, did you get it right? Did you get it right? All right, look at our next problem. First, union of B and C. You know what the good news is? We already did that. Hmm, this one is missing a problem. Missing something here. I believe what's supposed to be in this problem is a U. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so we're going to combine what's in A with this. Okay. So, all right, so we start at zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine. All right, okay, so now on to the last problem. We want to find the complement of A, what's not in A, if the universal set is this. So we need to look at all these compare it to A. Alright, so hit pause a second. Figure out what that is. When I look at it, what's not in A would be 0, 1, 7, 8, and 9. Not too bad, right? But we need to get used to working with the complement. Good job. The other kind of set notation problems you'll see have to do with Venn diagrams. Okay. So for our first example, based on this Venn diagram, let's say we have a question where 35 people are asked what they collect, either comic books, sport cards, or figurines. You are allowed to vote for more than one thing. So 45 people voted. And we will say that one person voted or said that they collect none of those three things. All right, 35 people voted. How many only collect comic books? Okay, look at your Venn diagram. That's your question. Think about it. Work on this alone, Mr. Adkins. Why don't you hit pause? See what they can figure out. So what do you guys think? Well, if I add up the numbers that are all here inside the circles, I get 32. Plus, I gave you the extra information that there were one other person that chose none. So there's 33 people total voted. 35 people were asked questions. So, and all I did to get that number 32 was to add this, 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 this. And then the 33 came from here. 
So I add those up, I get 33, which means that there must be two people that only collect comic books. All right. So with that information, you can ask other kinds of questions. For instance, how many people like only or exactly two things? So here's our second question. Exactly two items. How many collect exactly two items? Okay. What do you think? Hit pause. We'll talk about it. You work on it. Well, what'd you get? I got that. If you're looking for people that only, that, that collect exactly two items, you look for the ones in here. This one doesn't count because they collect all three, and it's not exactly two items. So three plus eight plus five is 16. Our answer would have been 16. Okay? So these are the types of questions you have to do, deal with Venn diagrams. I think you guys can handle them. What do you think, Mr. Atkins? Are they a smart class or what? All right. Now on to our third part of this set notation topic, and that is finding cross products. So in our first example, we have A, B, and C. And I'd like you to do two problems. A times B, B times C. And this relates a lot to like arrays or finding area. So um, when I say find A times B, really what I'm looking for is we're going to find the cross product, but what I want to know is what is the total number of elements in this set and this set? Okay, what is the total number of elements in those two sets? Okay, I will hit pause and you solve the problem. Pause. Okay, so if I were to do this problem, A, there is one, two, three, four, five, and B, there is one, two, three, four, five. So if we, we lined up A times B, basically pairs. 2 with 0, 2 with 1, 2 with 2, 2 with 3, so forth and so forth. You pair each one of these with each one of those, and just the shortcut, the easy way to do this, the way to get basically free points on your end of course exam. If you give a problem like this, just multiply, because there's going to be probably one, maybe two questions like this. So there's 5 here, 5 here, to find the total number of elements in A times B, 5 times 5, 25. Total number of elements of B times C, there's 5 here, 3 times here, 15. Now what do you think? That is an easy section, right? So these are free questions. I know you can get them right. Mr. Atkins, I think you did a great job explaining those. You should give Mr. Atkins another round of applause. Very good, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very good, Mr. Atkins. All right, this is the end of our video about set notation. I hope you can remember all this stuff. You know, I don't think it was the hardest topic, but it is something we need to remember for our end of course exam. So thank you again, Mr. Atkins, for letting us share the class and watch the video. Um, but Ms. Arbel, I started a trend so where we do a joke at the end of the comic. So we'll keep them all math jokes, of course. All right, so did you guys hear about the constipated mathematician. Hmm? Hmm? What do you think, Mr. Atkins? Did you hear about him? Yeah, uh, he had some problems. But you know what, that constipated mathematician? He worked it out with a pencil. Yeah, it was a number two. Mm hmm. Yes, we went there. All right, so I hope you guys do not have 99 problems tomorrow. It's only 62. But math will not be won. Goodbye.